what I think we just found. Now, we could have found either this one or we could have found this one. So what I think we found is this one currently, and we're touching it here. So if we touch the other side of that resistor... Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So this is part two of our how to fix any ESC uh, series, which is we're going over the anatomy and part two is going to be covering the microcontroller unit. We've already covered the FET driver um, on a schematic and as well as under the microscope through different examples. And I'm going to do the same thing with the microcontroller unit today. However, if you've missed the previous video, check the links down below for the playlist. Now, let's take a look at this so we're going to be covering the microcontroller unit to be exact we're covering the bb2 chip or bl heli 30 bl heli s escs we'll cover the f3s and the f1s which are the bl heli 32 in a later video but we might go over some things today the bb2 chip or the microcontroller unit is going to be much simpler than the fet driver as far as i believe and i'm actually going to show you techniques to find out uh, where to find how everything is connected and what resistor does what. So before getting started, a word from our sponsor. PCBWay is one of the largest PCB manufacturers and is a really great place to have your PCB manufacturer. Whether you're a hobbyist or a company, it is a great place to go. They have fast service, great quality, great customer support, and a file pre-check service where they have a human actually check your file before proceeding with the printing service in order to reduce any chances of error. Not only that, they have assembly services and they have much, much more. So go ahead and check the links down below to pcbway.com. All right, so now we're looking at the BB2 chip and we're going to cover its most important pins. We're going to leave VDD and ground for another day. I mean, they're pretty obvious. 3.3 volts and ground. You have two capacitors here to keep the overall voltage stable so it doesn't have any blackouts. And where did I get these values from? From the data sheet of the BB2 chip. And here we have the clock and data, and these are to program the thing. It, it consider, think of them as a USB, that's all these are. It makes it easier for the manufacturer to program, that's why you see those pads sometimes on an ESC, because it'll just have two pins in the machine that goes down and flashes it with the default BL Heli S or whatever the program might be. Now, those are out of the way, what are we left with? Now we're left with 11 pins, and these are the most important pins, obviously, and it's gonna be almost identical in every single one of them. However, the only differences might be between the firmwares is a couple things, which is the order at which each pin does what, and that's, I'll cover that in a later video. And um, also, the dead time, which will also be covered in a later video. But other than that, you don't really have to care if you're debugging. So let's start with the input. The input's very important because the input is obviously what tells the ESC what speed the motor should be on. For example, this would be either, either be the D-shot input or the PWM input or the multi-shot uh, input in here or the one-shot. So that would be, consider this a pad, it'll go through a 1K resistor and it'll go to the microcontroller unit and it'll tell the ESC how fast the motor should be spinning. Now. Let's take a look at these. We have high input one, low input one. This should actually be high output one, low output one. But the reason why I call them high input one and low input one is because these will be connected to the FET driver. All these six are connected to the FET driver because the FET driver sits between the microcontroller and the MOSFETs themselves. So for example, the microcontroller unit wanted phase one to be a high. So it'll send a signal here, just a voltage to high in one. High in one is going all the way here, going to the FET driver. And you can see it right here, high in one. And what that'll do is it'll go to the high output one, which is right here. And that is what's connected to the MOSFET. And that'll turn on the MOSFET for phase one to be positive voltage. And if you wanted it to be a negative voltage, then it'll be line in one. So the microcontroller unit would send line in one, and then uh, we would go here, we'll find it, it'll go in here, line in one, go through this thing, and we'll find the low output one, and that'll change phase A to a negative. And if you're confused, what are the phases? These are the phases here, the three pads you usually see, forget the, you know, it's a four and one ESC. Those are the three pads, MUX A, B, and C, phase A, B, and C, whatever you wanna call them. Those are the three that we're talking about here. So for example, when we said line in one, this would be a negative. And then if we said high in one, this would be a positive. That's all that does, because that's why you have two FETs for each phase. Now, let's move along to the MUX side of the BB2 chip. This right here, you can consider them as 
eyes of the microcontroller unit. And what do I mean by this? Well, when the motor is spinning, it's obviously, it's also creating voltage. Even if, for example, let's just say phase C here was off. And when the motor is spinning, it'll actually generate electricity because it's a, basically it's kind of like a generator. These motors are also generators. So it'll send an electrical signal back and it'll know, oh, mux C or phase C just passed by. Now I need to turn on phase A. And the reason why they do this is because these are sensorless ESCs and sensorless motors. There is no sensor to tell it where it is at any current moment in time. So it has to calculate that through the voltage that's coming back. And that's all that's doing. That's done software side. So we don't really have to get into the technical side of that. Now, the next step of the microcontroller unit, which is the parts that could go bad, are connected to the MUX A, B, and C. Now, these are not having a direct connection down to the phase pad where the motor connects. These go through a voltage divider. And let's take a look at these voltage dividers on the schematic before jumping into the microscope. All right, so here is the voltage divider for any given ESC. Now these values might be slightly different from ESC to ESC, depending on if it's a 6S, 4S, and, but it's all generally the same idea here. Now what a voltage divider does is it just, it's like a voltage regulator. It just steps down the 16.8 volts down to 3.3 volts because the microcontroller unit will basically burn if it takes anything above 3.3 volts. So this is what a voltage divider does here. Now, as you can tell, we have three resistors and it goes, see, MUX C. It goes back to phase C on the microcontroller unit. And VS bridge here, this is very important. VS bridge means the pad where the motor is connected. So here's the pad where the motor is connected and it'll actually not just go through the FETs, it's actually going around the FETs, going through one resistor where another two resistors meet and that'll go straight to the microcontroller unit. And here we have something called COM all, which is kind of like the common ground reference. So COM all I'm calling the common ground reference. It's just to get an idea of you know the voltage difference between each phase so it knows what is on and what is off currently, for example. But right now what I'm going to show you is a really nice technique of how to find these and how to figure everything out. So let's take a look under the microscope here. All right, so here we have a really great example because there isn't a lot of things going on and I just want you to understand the technique and obviously we're going to take it into more advanced steps later. So what I like to do is find all the resistors and usually they are just the black components on the board. For example, these here and these here, those black ones right there, that black one. These are diodes. We also covered with the FET driver, as you can tell, with the capacitors, but we're not going to look at that. We're just looking at the resistors today because that's very important. And what I like to do usually is um, draw this out. Now you'll be like, okay, what do you mean by draw this out? Well, so for example, this one right here, this end resistor is going to be this one here. So what I do is I just draw a line. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's what we see here. One, two, three, four, five. And then below them, we see we have three. And then those are the three right there. And then you get the idea here. Next thing what I do is I go ahead and I start measuring these. Now when I start measuring them, I usually get this thing and it is very useful and much easier to use than a normal multimeter. It's really quick and it gets the job done. So I start measuring them down and I start writing their values here. And then I get this here. So once that's done, then the next step I do is if you take a look at the voltage divider here, we see there's three resistors. And these three resistors are going to be identical for each phase. So for each phase, we should see a total of three resistors. So we see, we should, if this is 10K, then we should three, see three 10Ks. If this is 1K, we should see three 10, 1Ks. And if this is 4K, we should see three 4Ks. So here we see we have 1.6K, 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 0.8, 0.8, and 0.8999. Usually they're around the same area. So I am currently guessing, I'm forgetting everything else here. There's usually a lot more. I'm guessing that I have a high probability that these right here are going to make up the voltage divider. So it makes sense to me because three 1.6 Ks, we have three 9 Ks and we have 3.8 Ks. So I'm guessing these are obviously going to be the voltage dividers. Now, how do I figure this out? Well, this is the tricky part. So let's take a look back at the schematic here. Now, what I like to do first is I would put my multimeter on one of the pads and I would look for the highest resistor in this list, which should be this one, this one, and this one, because I'm guessing it's going to be one of these three. So let's do that under the microscope and see what we get. So right now I'm gonna put my multimeter in continuity mode. So on the schematic, the highest resistors are the first two here, 
which are these two. These are going to be 9, 9, and what do we have here? We also have this one. So it's going to be one of these. So I'm going to put one of my... All right, so I put the multimeter on a, a motor pad currently, and I'm going to start touching the 9. And make sure you touch both sides. So here's one 9, so nothing here. Here's another one, and nothing here, and here's the other one. Oh, there we go. So that is connected directly to one of the phases. So awesome. So what we found here is here's the motor pad and here's the first resistor. So the next thing down the line is we should see possibly the smaller one. So the 0.8K currently. And how are we going to verify that? So under the microscope right now, this is the side that's connected to the pad. So we want to go to the other side of that resistor. And we should start looking for, let's see, what do we have? 0.8K. I'm guessing it's going to be one of the 0.8Ks here. For example, this one, this one, or this one here. But more than likely, it's going to be the one next to it because they try to make it a little bit easier on themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and test the one right next to it here. I'm going to test the outside first. Okay, no beep. Oh, sorry. There we go. No beep here. All right, so that was good. So that worked. Now, to verify this pad right here or this resistor because what I think we just found now we could have found either this one or we could have found this one so what I think we found is this one currently and we're touching it here so if we touch the other side of that resistor which was this one here then this side here should be obviously connected to ground because we just probed this side we probed this side with this side of the resistor we got a beep and this side should be ground. If it's not ground, then it would probably be the one that's going to come all. So let's see. So we touched this one and these two beeps. So they were connected on the bottom here. So this right here should be ground. So let's go ahead and test that out. All right. So I'm going to move this up a little. So there we go. We have ground right here. And oh, ta-da. There is our voltage divider that we just found here. So that's awesome. All right, so let's recap here. So what did we do? We touched the bridge, we touched the VS bridge or the motor pad, and we touched the highest resistors we found. And we found that we got a check here. Next thing, we went to the other side and started testing the other resistors, and then we found this side of it. But we didn't know if we found this resistor that's connected to the common reference or the one that's in charge of the voltage divider that's going to go to mux C. And the way we, we double check that is once we found this resistor, we went on the other side, touched ground. If the ground didn't beep, then what we found was we found this resistor. So this is the voltage divider here that's in charge of MUX C or the sensing for phase C. Pretty simple, right? Hopefully it's pretty simple. All right, so another thing that I like to do to completely know how everything is connected is I bring my drawing back. And what we found here is I like to actually connect these. So for example, right now, under the microscope, we said that this one here, let me touch the, uh, just double check. Okay, the pad. Okay, so we found this one here, which is that one. This side is connected to VS bridge. So what I like to do is I would say, uh, we say motor pad. So that's connected to motor pad. And then we found that the bottom two are connected and we just double check that under the microscope. And these two are connected. So what we do next, what I like to do next is I like to connect them like this. And then we knew that this one was connected to ground. So I would just say, um, we just say G. So that's connected to ground. Now, obviously, there's one of these that are connected for the COM all here. And so, and the 1.6K that's connected for COM all is going to be this one right here because it has to be one of these three right there, the 1.6s, because that just is just common sense kind of. So it's this one right here, and we can say that this one is connected like this. So we're going to just, we'll just draw a line through it. All right, and now what did we find here? Well, we actually found this whole schematic right here. We found that the motor pad comes into 9, which would be considered this right here, this connection. It would go through the resistor, and obviously it should be connected to two different resistors. We have the one that's going to be for the, the 1K here and the 4K here, and we found the 
you know, the theoretical 1K here for it, which will be going to mux C, and 1.6 is going to be the common uh, of all. Now, what's really nice about this, if you test the other side of the 1.K now, you'll actually find that each one of these are going to be uh, connected together in some way, shape, or form, and the other side of them will be going through the uh, voltage divider for the other phase. So, for example, because you can see that all of them, the com all, are connected on the back end. So all of these actually go to one pin on the microcontroller unit for the reference. So what we can do now is since we know that this side should be connected to the microcontroller unit of this one, then we can actually find out the other ones as well also, the other 1.6Ks. So let's just see. See, hold on, it's really hard. So all of these three right here are connected together and going to... So now if what we do is the side that's all connecting the COM all together, we can actually touch one of them right here and then figure out which one it is on the microcontroller unit. And it's that one right there. So that would be the common reference uh, pin for the microcontroller unit here. And all of these should be connected together here for each phase. So now we could follow these two and figure out the other two phase resistors. So we already found one, which are these three together right here for the first phase. And then the other ones, we could find them around with the same concept. There should be three different values and each do their own thing. And now we already found these three. So we can kind of now work our way backwards through the whole schematic. Now, hopefully this made sense. It's really difficult to make such videos. And many of you have been asking for the schematics. These schematics are available to my Patreons until um, the public release, which uh, after I verify that they're working or the schematic for the open hardware version is working, then I release those, which could take some time here. Now, I'm really hoping this kind of made sense to most people out there. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. And uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.